Um, I'm excited to talk about a about 60-year-old mapping style and bringing it to the web. It was once termed spots and dots. Um, I'm choosing to call it gridded proportional symbols. I find that a little more informative as to what it is. Um, it was called spots and dots by the graduate students of Richard Saul Worman, who used this style in his book, Urban Atlas, in 1967. We don't actually know that he was the first person to use the style. In uh, uh, Bertan, in Semiology of Graphics, actually describes it in terms of concentric ringed point symbols. Um, if you've ever read or referenced this book, you'll know that it's very large and it covers pretty much anything in data visualization and was quite novel at the time. Um, so he spends just a small portion um, talking about this style. And you can see an example of it here, um, and hence why I like to call it gridded proportional symbols. Um, basically, the concept is that you have a ring or a circle, and then you fill it proportionally based off of a data value. Um, he actually takes it a step further and, and adds a second variable to talk about and to visualize the outline width um, or vary the outline width based off a of data value, but I'm not going to touch on that in this talk. I'm going to focus more on Werben, Werman's um, urban atlas of 20 American cities because this style is really the star of this work that he and his students put together. One of the 20 cities that he mapped is Pittsburgh, where we're at today. Um, and I find that this style works really well at visualizing density. And in this map, he visualizes residential population density. And what I like about it is that um, you can clearly see the patterns of where more people live throughout the city. I also like how not just on the more densely populated areas, you can clearly see areas where no data exists or no people live versus areas where small numbers of people live. So that's the areas where there's an empty ring. I also want to point out that because of the technology he had at the time, he had to classify his data. So this is broken up into five classes. He also did something um, interesting here, and that's uh, a different take on that style where he's mapping median household income. Rather than filling the, each of these rings with a solid circle or dot, he is uh, using uh, various numbers of rings and positioning them into different classes. Um, I don't find this style quite as successful as what he does with population density, and I question why he would even go that direction when mapping income, because um, some of these darker areas that you see throughout Pittsburgh, you might assume mean that they have higher income because they're darker, when in fact they actually fall into a smaller category than the surrounding areas. So I find it a bit confusing. But I believe the reason he chose to do that was because he was trying to experiment with bivariate maps as well. So this is his attempt at showing population density in conjunction with, uh, with uh, median household income. I think it's worth um, acknowledging that this is a valiant attempt at uh, bivariate mapping, though it is a bit unsuccessful in that the rings don't quite match up. The color clash kind of gives me 3D glasses vibes a little bit, makes me a little dizzy. But I also think that what he did was, was really valiant at the time, and he still went on to publish this work um, because of the amount of time that likely went into individually pasting each of these symbols um, for 20 cities in the, in the United States. So what about the web? Um, you could argue that this is basically a different way of, of looking at proportional symbols, and it is, but we don't really see applications of this on the web. Um, we do see applications of it um, if you look at uh, mapping over the last few years with hex bins, squares, diamonds, other shapes. Our own map gallery has two examples of these um, as well, um, but they're printed maps. So let's talk about what the web offers that you don't quite get it in print. Or not, not totally in print, but um, what Worman didn't necessarily have available to him. So each of the next uh, several maps I'm going to show you are maps that I created um, online um, to recreate this style. So this is 2023 population de uh, density in Pittsburgh. Um, you can see a slight variation in where, the, where more people live. There's actually fewer people that live in Pittsburgh today as back in 1967, about half the population, in fact. 
Um, what's different about this map is that these symbols are proportionally sized exactly to the data value, so there are no actual class breaks. You also have the ability to visualize any number of variables. So rather than just looking at residential population, now I'm looking at the population in the daytime hours or the working population. So I could toggle between these two maps and see a clear pattern of movement during the course of a working day. Or I could calculate a new variable from those to show the difference or the growth or decline in population um, between the evening hours or the morning hours and the working hours of the day. So the areas um, in green indicate areas where there was a growth in population, and the purple areas show the areas where people left in the morning. And the actual size in the, or fill of the symbol indicates the daytime population. You could do a slight, make it slightly different where the exact same color, continuous color is applied to each of these symbols, but I've changed the fill to represent the, the evening population. And because you're working on the web, you could actually add a slider um, to allow the user to interactively view how that population changes. This is, of course, something that he could not have done um, back in the 60s, but it allows you to describe movement um, over time. I think this is a pretty cool map. You can also have the ability on the web to play with different kinds of shapes. So instead of circles, now I'm looking at hex bins and filling the hex bins based off the daytime or working population. And we can actually view, visualize, use color to visualize which category of the population people belong to. So are they in that area working or are they residents of that area? So um, this map makes a lot of sense in that you see the brown areas that represent the residential population tend to be less densely populated during the, the daytime hours, whereas the downtown area of Pittsburgh shows higher population density that is mostly made up of workers. Something that I think is particularly effective with this tile is that it's really good at visualizing percentages. If you have a full circle or a full shape, that's 100%. If you have any value below that, it gradually scales down to zero. Um, and what we're looking at here is the percentage of the population with a graduate degree. So again, this checks out. If you look at the university area of the city, the majority of the population, um, about two in every three people hold a graduate degree in some of these areas. So I'm gonna switch back to using size to represent the residential population, but still focus on education. Now I'm do using color to represent the predominant educational attainment for the population in each of these specific areas. And this one validates what you were seeing in the previous map. This dark red area is areas where the population is predominantly has attained graduate degrees. Blue areas, they've attained a bachelor degree but not moved on. And everything else that's green indicates the majority of the population attended high school or maybe completed some college courses but didn't complete a, deg a degree. Um, nice thing about working on the web is that um, it allows you to view the overall pattern using color and size. Um, if someone wants to get individual values from a particular area, so if you look here, I've selected one of these cells um, by where the two rivers merge. Um, I can now see individual counts of people that attained each different level of education and even included a pie chart that allows you to see the overall makeup of that demographic. Um, you can do more things such as allowing users to explore the data interactively with the slider widget. So I've brought this layer actually into ArcGIS Online and now I'm exploring the median home value and seeing if there's any patterns that exist between median home value and educational attainment. And rather than look at population, now I'm looking at total number of housing units. Um, you see slightly different patterns as well in this data. I really like this color scheme because it really shows um, where homes that hold more value are without the city versus um, areas where it is below the median home value. Pittsburgh, it happens to be $228,000 um, as a median. So all of those 12 maps 
are um, maps that I created on the web, but it's, um, it's still challenging to create them. I didn't obviously use the same methods that Werman did with, or actually his students did rather, by pasting those <laughs> individual symbols probably for months on end for him. Um, but it does have unique complications that are a little different than, say, building a print map. For example, when you print a map, you're really concerned with one scale in the view. But on the web, the user has the ability to zoom in and out. And as you zoom in, um, if you don't account for scale, the screen size remains the same for those symbols, and they appear to be gapped. And as you zoom out, they overlap. And it makes for a very undesirable experience. And it really only works at the one scale that you authored it at. So when you account for scale, you can grow the size of the symbol as you zoom in, shrink it as it zooms out, so you get a nice looking visual at multiple scales. You could do something a little different by changing the actual resolution of your bins as well. So what I've done here is um, on the scale where I'm zoomed all the way out, in this one, I'm looking at one mile um, cells, and then I zoom into quarter mile cells, and, to, and then when, it makes, when I get to a point, where the aggregation no longer makes sense, I can just show the population at block groups. So another challenge outside of scale is just complicated symbology models. This is not as simple as just mapping a data value directly to a screen value as you can with a standard proportional symbol map. This is two different symbol layers working together. So you have to take data value and the view scale into account so that you can get the properly sized symbol for each area. And that's really hard to figure out um, and write in expressions, especially when you're working with lots of code. So the solution to that is to create a simplified API and a simplified UI that allows the user to basically bring in whatever data set they want to and easily create a map in just a few seconds. As you can see in this animation, I created this visualization in about 30 seconds. In fact, once I wrote the API that allows me to generate this style, all of those 12 maps I just showed you took me about one to two minutes to create and finish. So once that is all done, you can allow or empower your user to, um, to create this style in web applications. Um, at Esri, I'm always looking for ways that we can simplify um, valuable styles like this one and bring it into the web in ArcGIS Online. So this is under consideration currently. It would basically be an entry point in any size style that we have available today. And, um, and so it's something that we're still actively researching. Um, and I also want to thank you all for listening to the talk. I want to thank Jeremy and others I've consulted with, um, Craig, Ken, Mark, um, Jim, so many people have helped me throughout this uh, research project. You can also scan this QR code, you'll have access to all the slides, the apps, and um, my blog that I wrote detailing the code that it took to write um, and implement this on the web. So thank you. So I think we have time for one question. Does anyone have a question? Yes. Okay, great question. So the question is, how am I getting that data aggregated to the bins? Um, I used the uh, geo-enrichment tools in ArcGIS Online to enrich that data. So you can um, use a tessellation tool to create bins of any size. I've chosen to create bins of one mile, half mile, and quarter mile sizes. And then I've enriched those with the data that they have access to, the census data, the ACS. Um, and so they, they just provide that tool out of the box. Yes? Yeah, great question. Um, on the back end, are those tessellated hexagons or another shape? They are tessellated hexagons, um, though I have been experimenting with different um, approaches as well. Um, in ArcGIS Online and the JavaScript API, we have client-side binning, where if you have a point layer that's very dense, think hundreds of thousands of points, you can on the fly in the client 
bin those, and then you could apply this style to those bins as well. So it doesn't really matter the shape that you're working with. The circles actually work really well across the board, unless they're triangles, I guess. The triangles don't look very good, but you can tessellate to squares or, or, circle, or uh, hexabins and they work well. One more, sorry. Yeah, I things we can do on the web actually easier or even better than what we can do with static tools. Yes, so that's um, the yes. So today you can do this in probably any desktop mapping tool. Um, I'm not sure all the methods that people use. I imagine people use copies of layers to to do the to create the symbol layers. They could do the full. I'm going to create one symbol and that will have two symbol layers experience, but that takes a lot of work to figure out. So yeah, the goal is to make it easy and accessible. So you go into your UI, you basically check one box, and boom, you get it. There's a query for statistics, we pick um, data values that work, and then give you the tools like sliders and other UI inputs to be able to adjust that style. are at time for the session. Feel free to ask questions of our presenters. Thank you all so much for sticking with us at the end of the day here, and have a wonderful rest of NASIS. Thank you.